We learned on Saturday that the Los Angeles Rams have traded for Matthew Stafford. So much for my plan to bring Stafford into Washington. The deal includes the Rams sending two first round draft picks and a third round draft pick to Detroit, as well as Jarrett Goff. In exchange, the Rams get Matthew Stafford. This is clearly a signal that the Rams are in a win now situation. And they felt all along that, well, Jared Goff was probably holding the franchise back. Now we also learned that Stafford will not be receiving a new contract, nor an extension, at least not right away, according to the Bleacher Report. Um, Stafford has about $43 million on his current bill, uh, which has two years remaining on the contract. So who won this deal? Clearly Detroit. Now that they have a new regime in place with Dan Campbell, um, he's serving as the new head coach. He has LA's two first round draft picks and their third plus a starting quarterback who has playoff experience and Super Bowl experience. Detroit is all set. Now, whether if golf succeeds or not is really an afterthought. Detroit has gotten what they need to rebuild. So that being said, I can safely say now, that I'm glad we did not give up the King's Ransom to get Stafford. I was willing to give up maybe a first and well, maybe a couple of thirds, but nothing like what LA gave up. That being said, if the Matthew Stafford deal was worth two firsts and a third, as well as a starting quarterback, then any deal for Deshaun Watson is going to be easily worth that and likely more, right? Well, actually, the Texans have already stated their asking price, which is two first round draft picks, two second round draft picks, and two defensive stars. I'll tell you now, I understand the two first rounders. I understand the two second rounders, but if I'm Washington, I am not willing to give up two defensive stars. I said in the previous video that I might be willing to give up Montez Sweat, but after a few thoughts on the matter, there's no way I'm giving up anyone on that defensive front. Look, that defensive front is what has kept us in games that we wound up losing. And it's also that defensive front who let us win some games. So you don't start tearing up apart the first dominant unit that this team has had in years just for one player. Yes, I, I, I know it's a quarterback. Yes, I know it's Deshaun Watson. But if you want to rebuild or if you want to build a championship team, starts with the defense and Washington has been working pretty hard to build that defense into something special. So I think I would probably pass on Watson if it's going to cost us that much. It's likely Washington will be players for the second tier quarterbacks who might be available via either a trade, free agency, while Carr is under contract with the Raiders for another couple of seasons, there is a chance that the quarterback might be available because the rest of his contract is not guaranteed. And statistically speaking, Derek Carr is coming off one of his best seasons as a professional. He completed 67.3% of his passes, he had 27 touchdowns to 9 interceptions and a QBR rating of 101.4. That is pretty good stats if you ask me. So Derek Carr will turn 30 in March, so he still has plenty of tread left on the tires. He's still a decently young quarterback and you're looking at a quarterback who possibly you could have for at least 7 or 8 more years. He would definitely be one I would choose. Now, of course, another name that has been kicked around, and it's all because of the connection with uh, Marty Kearney and Ron Rivera, and of course, it's Cam Newton. Now, on the other hand, Cam Newton has come off of one of his worst seasons statistically. However, if there's something good we can say is that he only missed one game this past season, and that was really due to uh, COVID-19 protocols. But who knows? With Cam being 100% healthy in this offseason, 
he already knows Scott Turner's offense. Of course, he already knows Ron Rivera. This could be something that could be a no-brainer if you're Washington and it, certainly if you're Cam Newton. And we all pretty much feel that whatever contract that Cam would sign with Washington, it would pretty much be a one-year prove-it deal. I would really seriously doubt that Cam would sign a multi-year deal with Washington. And I kind of seriously doubt that Washington would be able to sign him or would want to sign him to a multi-year deal. I'm not turned off to having Cam Newton. When Cam is healthy, is one of he's easily one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But Cam has not been healthy for the last couple of years or so. I'm just really worried that maybe his injuries have really caught up to him and it's something that he won't be able to really ever truly recover from. You know, he can still score some touchdowns on his legs, but we also need a quarterback who has the arm. We need to get the ball out to Terry McLaurin and some of the other guys. Uh, we can't just rely on running backs, and we can't rely on just a quarterback who is one-dimensional. And that kind of brings us to Alex Smith. Alex is on the other hand. He still has the arm, and, well, you know, he... Some will say he never really had a big arm to begin with, but he can still get the ball out to his receivers. But it was his mobility that certainly came into question, and most certainly after that uh, calf injury that he had this year. So if we're looking at replacing whoever is going to be the starting quarterback next year or has the potential to be the starting quarterback next year that is already on this team, then you're going to have to look to guys like Derek Carr, you're going to have to also look at guys like maybe Marcus Mariota. Uh, you got Jameis Winston. <laughs> You're going to laugh, but Mitch uh, Trubisky, uh, Tyson Hill, maybe even um, Sam Darnold. Now, certainly out of all of those people, I am not as big on Sam Darnold. But then again, look at who his coach was at, at the Jets. I mean, maybe a different atmosphere, maybe under a different offensive coordinator, Sam Darnold possibly excels. I mean, who knows? Marcus Mariota, uh, that, that is certainly a name that intrigues me. I think uh, Mariota could possibly be a pretty good quarterback. Um, he's got the legs. He's got the arm. He's got playoff experience. So, I mean, Mariota, he's definitely one I would take a look at. I don't know his availability. Um, I do know that certainly Derek Carr could possibly be uh, available via trade. Marcus Mariota, I would have to look, but who knows, he could possibly be available as well. And it could be that Gruden is really wanting Marcus to take over for Derek. All that being said, I would definitely look at Marcus Mariota. Tyson Hill, certainly. I would love to have Tyson Hill. Uh, I think the guy, he, he's a big guy, he's tough. You know, he's been used as a little bit of everything in, you know, for the Saints. He can pass the ball, he can certainly run. He would definitely be a prototypical quarterback for Washington. Uh, under Ron Rivera. I think he would be perfect, actually. However, I'm not quite sure what the Saints are going to do with him. You know, is he going to be the one that's going to replace Drew Brees? Or is it going to be Jameis Winston? And of course, Jameis is on this list as well. Um, I would give Jameis a chance. Jameis has a good arm. He's, he's got starting experience. Uh, you know, he, he can run with his legs, certainly as well. So Jameis would be a good one to bring in. Between the two, I'm not sure who I would I would choose. Uh, I think possibly Jameis. I don't know. Maybe he's the one who takes over for Breeze. Honestly, at this point, I would be willing to take either one that doesn't take over for Breeze. I think they're both good choices. They're good young quarterbacks. And uh, I think they both could be very successful under the right regime. I just know that the quarterback situation in Washington is going to be very interesting. You know, we have certainly have heard that Washington is going to make an, a very aggressive move in the offseason to try to pick up somebody. So that tells me that they're not married on the fact of bringing Alex Smith back, even though that Alex Smith does want to come back for the 2021 season. But if they're going to make an aggressive move, then who is that going to be for? I really honestly believe it is going to be for one of those uh, second-tier quarterbacks. Because in Washington right now, I believe we're building a run-first style of offense, which is just fine with me. I mean, you know, despite... These people who say that that is old school, that 
you know, this is a quarterback driven league. And I, I do agree with that. But at, but at the same time, you don't always need to have the elite Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees or Tom Brady's uh, of the league. You would love to have those guys. But I think if you have a good serviceable quarterback, you know, somebody on the long lines of a Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota, you know, somebody like that, and you have a good running game to pair with them, and you got some good weapons, they're going to succeed. You just got to put them in the right system. And I think those guys could probably excel pretty good under Scott Turner's offense. I also believe that Washington's fans are, as much as they really got behind Taylor Heineke in the playoffs, really think that everybody's stepping back and saying, yeah, he was great. He left it all on the line. Gay for Taylor Heineke, but we don't want him starting for us because we need a top-notch quarterback. I don't think that Washington fans are going to be too excited or happy if Washington kind of swings and misses on all of these quarterbacks that could or, or should be available during the offseason. I think the sentiment is we we are almost one quarterback away uh, from really making a good Super Bowl run. And that that is very debatable in itself. I don't know if I can quite say that this team is just a quarterback away from making a Super Bowl run. It could possibly be that it is an improbable Super Bowl run that nobody really saw, but everybody kind of thought, yeah, this team could definitely make the playoffs and make a deep run in the playoffs, but probably not the Super Bowl. That's where I'm kind of leaning toward if we do wind up getting another quarterback coming into Washington. I definitely still feel like that we have some holes that we need to fill. I would probably say on the offensive line, we really need to look at beefing up the offensive line. As good as that they did this year, I thought they did surprisingly well. But I really feel like that is where you build championship teams. It's in the trenches. We've done it on the defensive line. We need to do it on the offensive line as well. So that's where I would probably look. Hey, if you don't mind, would you consider giving me a like on this video? I've worked pretty hard to, to bring some good content for you, and it really helps me to get this video out to others who want to watch some Washington content, Washington football content, Washington Redskins content, whatever you want to call them. Um, it really helps to get my videos out to others so they can see it, and um, as well as other NFL fans as well. And if you really are enjoying this channel, please consider subscribing. I'm going to bring you some more content on the way and I think it's going to be really fun. That's all I have time for today, folks. And just remember, hell to the football team.